Now with the world of running shoes seeming to go a bit crazy at the moment and prices getting higher and higher and higher, interest rates increasing and the cost of living going up, I thought it'd be perfect timing to dive headfirst into the world of Timu. Now, if you haven't come across Timu before, it is an online marketplace where you can pretty much purchase anything you want at a very good price. And there's some great deals to be had, or should I say, let me rephrase that, it looks like there's some great deals to be had. So I thought I would put them to the test. So I've actually gone out and I've purchased eight handy running items off their website. And in today's video, we're gonna have a good look at them and I'm gonna be testing them out. So let's dive into the video and fingers crossed. Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video. It's great to have you all along. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Now, I don't know whether this is happening to you folks, but whenever I seem to go online these days, I get inundated on Instagram, Facebook or Google with ads from Timo offering me all kinds of bonkers looking products at some ridiculously cheap prices. They must know that I enjoy a bit of running because a lot of those products are running kit or running gear. And this really got me thinking, you know, is it all just cheap, plasticky rubbish or amongst all of those products they're offering me is some of that running gear actually okay and really good value so i spent a good few hours trolling through all their running related products and i picked out eight items that actually looked okay and i thought you guys might be interested in uh, i've got to be honest when i was placing that order i thought it was just all going to be a load of old junk and a complete waste of money but since it's arrived i, I took it out of the box had a, a quick look and some of it actually looks okay so the first item we're going to take a look at is a pair of their running socks in this nice bright color because we know i like a colorful pair of running socks and these actually only cost me two pound 38 so first up let's get them out of this plastic bag and they're actually available on the timo website in lots of different colors uh, i actually went for this nice sort of pink and blue color and i think they look really smart if not, just a little bit too small. So uh, this is supposed to be a US 7 to 11. Hopefully they will fit. Uh, the construction is a nice blend of polyester, nylon and spandex and they feel very soft to touch and they also feel like they'll be nice and breathable. But I think the best thing to do is get the socks on our feet, we'll jump into a pair of running shoes and let's test them out. Okay, so we've made it outside. The socks are feeling pretty comfortable straight away. So nice soft fabric. I would say the level of padding is quite thin, so they're not overly padded and they feel nice and breathable. We've got just a nice steady run on the road plan for today. So uh, I suppose the best test will come once we get running. So let's get going. Okay, so pretty much six miles done in the socks and they're actually feeling pretty good. Uh, quite a shiny fabric, but I'm not slipping around in them. I thought that might be the case. I do personally prefer a little bit more padding in my running socks, but you know, for the price under three pounds, they're actually performing really good. But uh, let's get stuck into the next item. So let's get back to the studio. Item number two is a 500 mil soft flask. So very similar to what you'd get with a, a Salomon, an Innovate or an Ultimate Direction hydration vest. So let's get this open. And the first thing I'm seeing is we've got some handy measurements down the back of the bottle. I'm also seeing that it is uh, BPA and PVC free, which is good to see. We've got a very similar uh, bite valve that you'd get on the Salomon soft flasks, but it comes with this handy lid so you can pop that on top, push that down. It's gonna stop you losing any fluid if you uh, accidentally squeeze that valve, which is a nice touch. And also the quality of the bottle actually feels a, a lot better than I was expecting. The downside is it's got quite a small opening, so very similar to the old Salomon soft flask. So it would be quite awkward maybe to fill it up at checkpoints or if you wanted to pour your tailwind or electrolyte in, it's gonna be a bit tricky. But like I said, the actual overall quality of the bottle
bottle is a lot better than I was expecting. Before we dive into all the other running items, if you are enjoying the channel and you're finding it helpful, but you're yet to subscribe, then maybe today is the day. Uh, it's super simple to do just by clicking on that little red box down there in the corner. But the best bit of all is it is completely free, but a big help to the channel and greatly appreciated. So the next item of running kit we're gonna be looking at is an item I use all the time in the colder months, and it is a handy pair of arm warmers. So let's get them opened up and see what we've got inside. So the first thing I'm noticing is maybe it's not the best quality technical fabric in the world, but they did only cost me £1.68, so I wasn't really expecting a lot, even though the website did say that it was high quality fabric that's gonna keep you warm in the cold months and then nice and cool in the hotter months. Uh, they're available in lots of different colorways, and like I thought, They've got a bit of elastic at the top, but there's no rubber grippers to hold them up. So maybe this isn't gonna be the best piece of running kit that we look at today, but I think we should pull them up and let's test them out. The good old weatherman has stitched me up again. So today was supposed to be cloudy in the morning, getting brighter as the day goes on, and it's pretty cold out here and the air is really damp. So actually he hasn't stitched me up because it's perfect weather for testing out the arm warmers. So let's pull them on. I'd have to say this is probably the item of kit that I've got from Timu that probably gives me the least amount of confidence if I'm honest. But okay, well, they're fitting all right. <laughs> and they're definitely giving me another level of warmth from this chilly wind. Uh, I suppose the best test will come once we get running, but actually they feel all right. They feel all right as well. Let's see if they slip down or move because I haven't got any rubber grippers in and when I'm running, but let's get out of there, give them a go. Okay, so I actually take it all back when it comes to the arm warmers. Okay, I'm not sure they're gonna be the most durable thing I think they would perform better with rubber grippers at the top, but they're actually fitting all right. They haven't fallen down. Uh, the fabric's nice and soft. It feels nice and breathable. And it's given me that extra layer of warmth. So like I said, the only thing I can think of is when it comes to the, the stitching, uh, the stitching looks a little bit dodgy, if I'm honest. It doesn't look like it's gonna you know, hold up to lots and lots of times of pulling them on and off. But yeah, maybe a little bit better than I thought. Okay, so maybe not the best pair of running arm warmers I've ever used, but I think they'd still do a pretty good job. So moving on, the next three items are all pieces of running kit that are, are gonna keep you nice and safe when you're out there running at night. So the first one is a reflective high-vis running strap. We've also got a little sort of clip-on safety light. And then last but not least, we've actually managed to get a 350 lumen fully rechargeable head torch. And all three items cost me the grand total of £10.26. So if these all fit and work well, it's a complete bargain. Let's start off with the head torch first. And from what I saw on the website, this is a, quite an odd looking unit. So let's grab it out. So first up, we have this long LED light strip that runs across the front there. And then mounted on the side, we've got a smaller spotlight. Comes with this rather cheap looking, fully adjustable strap. And then on the side of the torch itself, we have the power button. So let's uh, turn that on. You've got a little battery indicator there, but there's also another button that if we press, it actually turns on a sensor. So I should be able to turn it on and off by magic. Well, it's not magic, it's just me waving my hand over the sensor. It is fully rechargeable. It comes with the USB-C charging cable. If we run you through the output, so that main LED strip along the front on max output is 350 lumens and you'll get two hours of burn time, apparently, but we're definitely gonna be testing that out by the end of the video. You can drop it down a set into uh, 150 lumens and that will give you a longer burn time of five hours. And then on the side with that little spotlight, Max output is 150 lumens and four hours, or you can have it on 60 lumens and that will give you eight hours. So, you know, if all them uh, details and specs are correct, then that's not bad, especially considering that this head torch cost me only £3.79. Yeah, 
You heard me right, only £3.79, so ridiculously cheap. Up next is a fully rechargeable, hands-free magnetic flashlight for outdoor use. So let's grab that out of the box. So there it is, little uh, clip-on light. So this actually has got three modes. So you've got a high white light, you've got a red light and a flashing red light. It comes with two strong magnets. So that allows you to attach it to a running pack, a running belt or an item of clothing. And then the whole unit is covered with this soft sort of rubberized case to protect it from the weather. And moving on to the next item, and it is that high-vis reflective strap. So let's pop the bag open. It's just your kind of standard running or cycling high-vis strap. So it's actually available in lots of different high-vis colorways. We've got reflective strips all the way over it, a nice substantial buckle on the front. So that is the three items, but perfect timing. The sun has just gone down outside. So let's get the three items together and let's go and test them out in the darkness. Okay, so we have made it outside. I've got the head torch fired up. I've got my flashing little safety uh, red LED light and I've got the high-vis strap on. So let's get the head torch on my head. Let's go running. Okay, so that is the run done. And I've got to say it, that that strip LED light gives off a very bright 350 lumens. The only thing I would say is, because it is a strip light, there's no sort of tilt adjustment on a, a bezel that you'd normally get on a running head torch. So I can't really focus the light to the angle that I want to light up the ground. I can still see where I'm running, but I wouldn't want to use it running fast on technical terrain. Uh, it's nice and light. The strap is really secure. Uh, really easy to get to the buttons on the side as well. So lots of things impressing me about the head torch considering the price point. When it comes to the strap, you can see uh, on the footage there that it is super reflective and it's really lighting me up like a Christmas tree and not bad considering it's under two pounds. And then the last thing, we've got that clip-on flashing light. So real strong magnets, uh, clips onto that strap nice and securely so it hasn't fallen off or anything like that. So I think it's time that we get back to the house. It's pretty chilly out here. And then we're gonna dive into the next running item. So we made it back in one piece and we could actually see where we were going. I thought that front LED strip was actually pretty bright and uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for running, but if you're going out doing a bit of walking or camping or a bit of DIY at home or working on the car engine in the garage, then I actually think it would do a pretty good job for that. We must remember it is fully rechargeable. It's quite a light unit as well, so not too heavy and it only cost me £3.79. So like I said, I think that's pretty good value if you just want a sort of everyday head torch. Next item is a pair of sports insoles. Let's get them out of this horrible crinkly plastic bag. So there you have it. So uh, we've got a bit of extra padding on the heel and under, I was gonna say under the forefoot, but that's not really under the forefoot in a bit of a, an odd place. Uh, so these are available in a couple of different sizes. And we've got some nice texture under the forefoot there and a nice bit of shape in the instep. So I think the best thing to do is let's pop these into a pair of running shoes, see how they feel. Okay, so that is the sports insoles in my pair of Kimvara Pros. Uh, I've got to say it, the first impressions are they fitted into the shoes really well, but it does feel a little bit odd when it comes to the shape under my instep. It is pretty dominant. We've got a sort of steady 10K plan today. So I guess the proper test will come when we're out there running in the shoes with the insoles. So let's get out there. Okay, so we are coming up to four miles on the run with the sports insoles in the Kimvara Pro. And I've got to be honest, I don't think they're really working for me. There's just too much shape to them, especially on that instep. Feels way too dominant, almost to the point where I've got something in my shoe that shouldn't be there, so not feeling that comfortable. They do fit okay, and they have bedded down a bit, but like I said, I'm not digging the shape. I think it's also affected the fit of the Kambara Pro, so I don't feel as well held in the heel because it's slightly lifted my foot in the shoe. The shoes definitely feel and run better 
with the Sockany Power On Plus insoles in. So, unfortunately, the insoles aren't doing it for me. Now you might recognize this, so let's get it out of the pouch. And it is an elasticated sort of banded style running belt. These sort of belts are featured on the channel a lot. Now, looking at it, it, it really reminds me of something. Where have I, where have I seen it? Yeah, okay, it is clearly a complete rip off of Compress Sports free belt uh, to the point where they've actually written Compress Fit on the belt itself. I mean, come on, but taking it out of the pouch there, holding it, feeling the fabric, it does kind of feel exactly the same as my Compress Sport Freebelt Pro. It's available in four different sizes from small through to extra large and just like the Compress Sport Freebelt, it's one entire pocket wrapping around the belt and then we got some stitches on that top just to give it a little bit of structure. Unfortunately, we haven't got any sort of pull tabs on the pockets. There's also no uh, pole carrying system or a race number holder, which is a shame. But then, you know, what do I expect when this belt only cost me £6.50 and I mean looking at it feeling the quality uh, I think this is going to be really good value but if you followed the channel for any period of time or watched any of our other running belt videos then you know that there's only one way we like to test a running belt out and that is with the run for adventure world famous bounce test uh, well it's not really world famous it's just a bit of fun but let the bounce test commence Okay, so you join me at our secret testing grat. Well, it's not really secret. I've just come to a quiet bit of trail here in hell, so I don't get disturbed. But I have pulled together our mandatory bounce test kit. So I have my mobile phone. I've also got a 500 soft mill flask of water. Actually, the one that I got from Timu. This is performing really well. The quality is way better than I was expecting. I've also got a pair of running gloves, a couple of gels, and a lightweight head torch and a lightweight running jacket. And this is the kit that we use in all of our bounce tests, just to keep it nice and consistent across all of the tests. So I'm gonna load this up in the belt and then we are getting bouncing. the bounce test done and I've got to say it maybe there was a little bit more movement than some of the the more expensive belts that we've tested on the channel but we've got to remember this belt was six pounds fifty and I'm actually really impressed with the quality of the fabric and the construction but there was definitely a bit more movement with uh, all of this kit inside the belt so I think it's time to get back to the studio and we're going to wrap up with a quick conclusion when it comes to the performance of all these Timu running related products so let's get back to the house Okay, so bear with me, that is all the items of running kit that we purchased from Timu tested out. And you know, what have I learned from this whole experiment? So firstly, I think you really do get what you pay for when it comes to the quality of items. Although some of these things have actually performed quite well and a lot better than I was expecting, especially when you take into consideration the price point. Firstly, let's run you through all the items that maybe didn't work quite as well. And we've got the sports insoles now. This could just be a personal foot shape issue, but they really didn't feel very comfortable underfoot. Uh, also, they had a big negative impact on the fit of my running shoes, which is definitely not a good thing. And I'm not convinced about the amount of development they've had when it comes to fit, support, or performance. So, sorry, sorry, yeah, the, uh, the insoles are definitely not for me. Uh, number two is the arm warmers. Now, these weren't quite as bad as the insoles, and they did give me that little sort of extra layer of warmth, but, I've got several pairs of arm warmers that are considerably better than these, but then again, they did probably cost 10 times the price. So I think if you're on a tight budget and you're looking for a pair of arm warmers, these will do a job, but I'm just not convinced about the durability. The head torch was bright, it was nice and lightweight, and it felt super secure on my head. However, I wouldn't really recommend it for running. If you could get that light focusing on the ground a bit better, then I think it would actually do a good job. But if you are in the market for a cheap head torch for sort of everyday use, then I think for under four pounds, this would actually do a really good job. As far as the other nighttime running items go, well, that little 
clip-on safety light works super good out there on the run. Having three functions, those really strong magnets makes it really easy to attach. And then you've got the weatherproof rubberized coating and the fact it's fully rechargeable all for under a fiver. And last but not least, we have that high-vis reflective strap uh, as good a quality as any I've seen and costing only £1.98. I mean, that really is great value. So I think we've actually got two super functional, super affordable winter running accessories. So moving on to my sort of three standout items and we've got the 500ml soft flask, we've also got the running socks and then we've got that running belt. So first up, the socks were very comfortable out on the run. They felt nice and breathable as well. I also think they look awesome in this colorway and you know, £2.38 for a pair of technical running socks, you can't really go wrong with that. And then the quality of the soft flask really did impress me. Uh, good fabric on the bottle, the seams look really well sealed together. But I also like the fact that you get this addition of a lid that you can pop over that nozzle so you're not going to lose your fluid if you're transporting the flask or if you're shoving it into a running belt. And again, great value at under £5 when you compare it to the Salomon soft flask that cost £18. And then we've got the compressed spot, I mean, sorry, the compress fit belt. Now, when we did the bounce test on the belt, there was a bit of movement there with it fully loaded with kit. But I personally think that comes down more to the sizing. So I followed the sizing chart on the Timu website and I ended up going for a large. I personally think they size up a bit big and a medium would have probably fitted better. And I think that would have actually stopped a lot of the movement. Since doing that bounce test, I've actually used it on a couple of runs where I've been carrying uh, my mobile phone and a 250ml soft flask of water and it performed really well. I really like the fabric. I think the construction is good. So if you are looking for a running belt to carry a couple of items, then at £6.50, I personally think this is a great option. So there you have it, folks, all the running items that we tested off of the Timu website. And it's been a pretty interesting experiment. You know, some have performed way better than I was expecting and some have been Pretty terrible, if I'm honest, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So let us know what you think about the running items from Timu. It'd be great to get your opinions. Uh, really hope you've enjoyed the video. Really hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to support the channel more, we also have a Patreon page. So for as little as two pounds a month, you can come along and join the Run For Adventure family. Not only does it really help the channel out massively, but it also opens up a world of Run For Adventure perks but until next time guys thanks for watching thanks for supporting it is really appreciated we'll be back here very very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running offering me all kinds of bonkers products at ridiculously cheap mic check one two three ha 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 ha